Now, usually we can use SH to make the SH sound at the start or end of a short word, and it can also be used in suffixes, as we're seeing on, on the end of some of these words here. So suffixes ending with SH. Now, generally, otherwise, in a multisyllabic word where we want SH in the middle, we're using TI as the most common, CI, SI. There's only two words with XI in them, obnoxious and anxious. And CE, the only word I can really think of is ocean. So that's um, all on its own with CE. And it quite often is used in an NAPLAN exam. Now A may say O oh, after a W as in was, a WH as in what, and a QU as in quality. So that's coming through here. That's why you've got the O oh sound in squash and we're using an A for it. So we can see here we've got a short word with short vowel and we're using SH at the start or um, short word with short vowel and it's got the SH at the end so we're using that for the sh sound whereas down here we're seeing it used in the prefixes. Um, don't be um, afraid to highlight as much as you can in these words so looking for any clues to make it easier for you is um, a good idea. So you can see if you've got a short vowel, you're going to have a double consonant after those, after the short vowel in these multisyllabic words. And especially with accomplish, you know, because there's two C's after it, you know that you're going to give that A a short vowel sound at the start of that word. So it also helps you pronounce words correctly. Now let's go through and have a look at what each of these words mean. So um, shall means, it indicates... Um, future tense and it's used to express a strong intention um, so you might hear the idiom on occasion speak of the devil and he shall appear um, so you would have to think about what that means now flesh is um, could refer to meat and it means a uh, muscle and fat um, and an idiom that you might hear on that one would be um, in the flesh, what does that mean? Um, squash could be to crush something or it could also be a type of vegetable. Sluggish means um, lazy and slow. Rubbish could mean nonsense, um, but it could also usually means trash or rubbish or garbage. Um, nourish means um, to provide food or substances necessary for health and growth. Um, diminish means to shrink or reduce or make smaller. Astonish means to amaze. Establish means to install. And accomplish means to succeed. We discussed yesterday that usually SH makes a sh sound at the start or the end of a short word. Um, and we've also got it being used uh, at the end of these suffixes that we've added to some of these basal root words. Um, so go through and highlight the SH in those words and anything else that you think may make the spelling easier. Then we talked about the meanings of these words yesterday too. So if you get stuck, do go back to day one video. Fill in the gap with the missing list word. Quite easy. It's just going to be in its base form as stated here. Copy the list word and then match to the meaning, so you have to write it again and then use different coloured highlighters or colour pencils to link them to their meanings. Antonyms of course mean the opposite, synonyms mean the same as, so you've got to find a word to replace them depending on whether that it has to be opposite in meaning or the same in meaning. meaning. Um, complete the idiom and define, once again we discussed these idioms yesterday, so go back to day one video if you can't remember the answer. And down here, circle the correct word in each sentence. Now, a lot of people get these confused. Now, shall means definitely. So, I shall go to the beach means I shall definitely do it. Um, whereas, a shell is something you might collect at the beach. Shell, with the apostrophe before between the E and the LL, indicates that it's a contraction. And we've taken out the WI and we put the apostrophe in where we've taken out those letters. So, She'll replaces she will in a sentence. She will go to the beach, she'll go to the beach. Um, shan't is short for shall not. We've taken out the double L and the O and we're putting the apostrophe in where we've taken out the last letter. So in between the N and the O. Shell, shallant 
is not a word. We've just put that in to trick you, but, um, and you can hear it, shallant, no, you'd never use that in a sentence. So you're not going to choose that as one of your answers. I suggest you work through this set of words within your group and work out whether each of them is either a verb, a noun or an adjective. Just put a V for the verb, an N for the noun and an ADJ for the adjective. Then when you get down to sorting the list words, you can pop them very simply into each of their categories. Now there is one word that can be two things, it can be, appear and be used in two different forms. So um, you will have 11 words to write down here. Um, fill in the gap with the verb in the correct tense. You know how to do that. We've done a lot of work on that. Now make the new word and use it in a sentence. So when you make the new word, you're going to have to decide if it's a verb, a noun, an adjective or an adverb to make sure that you use it correctly within the sentence that you write. So down the bottom, fill in the gap with a modal verb, shall, should or might. Now a modal verb just indicates the intensity of meaning. So you shall go to the beach means you definitely will. You should go to the beach. Well, it's a nice day. You've probably got time. You should do it. But And then you might do it means mm, it's um, something you could do, but ooh, might be questionable whether you do do it. So these words have different intensity and um, you have to use them accordingly in the three sentences that we've given you. Today's activity is about figurative language, metaphors and similes. So we use figurative language when we make comparisons or draw associations to describe something more vividly than if we used only literal language, which is saying things exactly as they appear. So metaphors and similes are drawing comparisons. So a metaphor, in a metaphor we're saying A is B and we use words like am, are, is, was, were. Whereas a simile is we are saying A is like B. So we use words such as like or as. So metaphor, what are some qualities the knight is being given through the comparison to a lion? The knight was a lion on the battlefield. I'll give you a hint. I can think of one, um, one of the qualities. We're saying that the knight was brave. Um, a simile, we, how would the comment make its receiver feel? The comment made me feel like I was stepping into the sunshine. So you've got these little hints up here to help you work out which form uh, we're using. So a metaphor, we're going to use an M, of course, an S for a simile. So circle the word that makes it a simile or a metaphor. So go through and circle those and then write down the S or the M here. Choose one of the metaphors or similes above and explain what it means in a more straightforward way. So therefore, we're going to be using literal language down here. Write a metaphor and a simile to and write an explanation of what you're trying to communicate to the reader through the comparison. So you could use an example of one that you've um, read in a book or you've used in a story and then um, give the explanation afterwards.